choice. I was always going to be a doctor. My dad was a doctor. I used to go with him on house calls. Um, we used to go to him to the hospital and nursing homes. I remember the days when nurses used to stand up when a patient walked into the room. It was, you know, it was, and when a doctor walked into the room. You know, I remember the days when being medicine was really such an honorable thing. You know, patients would come to my dad and be just filled with gratitude and. You know, so that's what the field I thought I was going into. So that's kind of where I come from. I'm also a mom, two kids, and that also informs a lot of my decisions and the lies that we see. So I was, and, I, and I'm also an attorney, and I went to law school as well, really to understand health policy better and things like that, and that is also informing what I've seen this year. So what's going on this year, right? I'm gonna do a little bit of a review, if you can indulge me, just maybe five minutes or so on the COVID issue to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page because it's hard to understand the vaccine issue without understanding COVID-19 before it and the treatment options. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So there I was practicing in the emergency department and I don't say this really, this might be the first audience I've said it like publicly, but I've spent virtually all of my career in the inner city. So it's very funny when I read descriptions about me online because I don't need to brag and say what I do, what I don't do, but that's a fact. I was, if anybody who's familiar really with Los Angeles, I spent many years at Sentinel Hospital in Inglewood. That was kind of my home place, you know, home of the Crips and the Bloods, you know, and I was there. So, you know, I, I didn't maybe look like my patients, but like, this is like kind of like my people. Like, like you know, I spent, that's, you know, that's my people. So, I'm, just, I'm just sharing, I'm just sharing that so you have a flavor of like who I am. So, this year, and I wasn't, I stopped working there two, about two years ago, had nothing to do with this. This year when COVID started coming, I um, mean, I was watching the science and the literature from overseas, you know, pretty interested in policy stuff, and you know, I was riveted, and I was reading, and I was watching, and I remember when I first heard about hydroxychloroquine, I'm like, that sounds great, that sounds promising. You know, I was following D.D. Raoul, a very famous scientist in France, and he had written all these studies, I'm like, that's great. I'm, you know, I, I was still naive, I thought, you know, that meant that, great, we'd have a solution. And then I'd be going off to work, and people were very kind of, they didn't really care. They're like, okay, use it, don't use it. You know, nobody cared. And then on March 19th, I think it was, the president at a coronavirus task force meeting happened to say, I happen to feel good about it, hydroxychloroquine. Now, I felt a little bit like a genius because I had already gotten my hands on this stuff. I got it from my friends, multiple prescriptions. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I'm so smart. I said it before the president did, and there's going to be a huge run on this thing. So remember when there was a big run on toilet paper? Yeah. You know, you could get, okay. the doctors were hoarding hydroxychloroquine. Like any doctors could get their hand on it. Right, that, okay. The next day, though, the media just like, you know, vomited all over hydroxychloroquine. I don't know what other word to use for it. And I was really shocked. I was like, what is going on? But I'm living this life where I'm going to work and I'm asking my peers in an academic medical sense, you know, what do you think about hydroxychloroquine? All of a sudden, all these doctors that really didn't care, but they were like, yeah, use it if you want to use it, don't use it if you don't want to use it. All of a sudden, when it became political, all said, oh, no, 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 don't use it. And by the way, this wasn't really a political issue because where I was working was a pretty, it was a pretty Republican area as it happened. So it, it was just that the media had said to them that it was bad. So it wasn't really about Trump, it was just the media said it. I remember being really surprised by doctors who are capable of reading the medical journals themselves we're just following what Twitter and Facebook said. I remember being shocked. <laughs> I was like, okay, so I, I've had these kind of academic discussions about, no, 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 it's really dangerous. I'm like, what are you talking about? They say, well, no, you can get this heart rhythm problem. I'm like, you mean the one in a million thing? Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was just so weird to me that they weren't critically thinking. And I was like, hmm, that's very strange. Okay, but it was still very academic. It wasn't full of hate. It was just, you know, kind of a thing. We didn't really have on COVID yet because I was on the West Coast and it was really just at that point in New York. So it was an academic discussion. When it finally came to my hospital in California, and then when we finally got the, um, the rapid COVID test and I could start using the hydroxychloroquine and zinc, first time I started prescribing it, honestly, even despite the controversy, I never thought twice about it. I prescribed it for the patient. She goes home because she wasn't that sick. And then the next day, my medical director calls me, and so long story, but basically said he's gonna fire me if I ever do that again. And I was like, again, I, I wanna impress upon you how bizarre this is. So we get into this kind of heated discussion. I said, what, what's the deal? He goes, well, I don't think it works. And I said, no problem, then don't prescribe it. Okay, 
because I'm reminding, I'm teaching you, but I'm reminding him, doctors don't tell each other what to do. Like in residency and in training, you discuss things academically, you read journals and you, you say, you know, this is good, this isn't good, but you don't actually tell someone what to do, we're all equal. You do your thing, I do my thing, that's why people go see more than one doctor, right? right. So, it was, and then I said, are you not noticing how weird this is? Like, we've been working together for years. You've never said to me, I can't do something. Like, you're the medical director. I mean, it's very weird. I want you to notice how weird it is, and they're not recognizing how weird it is. And I'm like, wow, oh, this is really strange. Yeah. For me, that moment was the invasion of the body snatchers moment. Yeah. I remember standing yeah. in the ER, and I'm like, he looks like a doctor. <laughs> he seemed like a doctor. But, like, where is his brain? Like, it was weird. It was just weird. So I was like, that, that's really strange. And, and now it's unfolding. And I remember, and he's telling me,